Thank you, Gino. Um, so I'm Shelley. I'm going to be your trainer today. We've got quite a small group today. So if you do have any questions, obviously, um, as it's been said, I've a comment in the box. And as I see them, I'll, once we get to a point that I can answer them, I'll answer them. Or obviously raise your hand. And again, once we get to a point that I can um, answer questions, we will do. But I will give you opportunities. I'll say, has anyone got any questions before we move on to the next section, etc. So I'm just going to share my slides with you now. Okay, so you should now be able to all see the slides. I'm going to turn my camera off, but I am still here, I promise. It's just so that you guys can concentrate on the slides and not concentrate on me. So today we're going to be looking at the BTEC Tech Awards and we're going to be concentrating on the BTEC Tech Awards in Animal Care 2022. And we're going to be looking at the moderation process mainly today. Um, we have had the Getting Ready to Teach sessions um, previously so some of you may have been on them may not have been um, if you have obviously there is some stuff that may cross over but we did go in a lot more detail about other stuff that we're not going to necessarily cover today so I will highlight points where we have covered that previously um, there is another trainer so if you haven't been to the getting ready to teach and you'd like to there is another one on the 20th of October which is Thursday so if you want to attend that you can come and join me then um, otherwise obviously it's, there might be a pre-recording available as well, um, so you can obviously watch that back. But today we are going to focus on the following aims and objectives. So how to apply the level based marking. We're going to look at obviously how you do the marking for the Pearson set assignments. We're going to mainly be focusing on them today. And then we're going to look at the exemplar um, standardization materials. That is what the main focus is going to be. We're going to open them up. We're going to look through them in detail and discuss them. Um, we will go through the moderation process. We'll talk about the quality assurance and admin, how to obviously mon monitor the assessments and how the process will all work, warden and grading, results and reviewing, and any key dates and further support. And I will at the end give you a quick tour of the website to show you where all the things you need are. So before we start, has anyone got any questions or anything that they want to raise before we get going? Okay. So the first thing we're going to look at is the applying the mark scheme. So you're going to get the mark, um, Pearson set assignments. Is anyone doing it this window that's just opened? There's one that's just opened. It was last um, a couple of weeks ago that's opened. Does anyone sit in that one? Put yes in the text box if you are. But we found that majority of them aren't doing it this time because obviously you've just started teaching it. So you probably won't have enough physical time to teach it. And most people are wait, waiting for the next window. So I'm guessing that's all you guys. But yes, the, this is the only for the Pearson Mark assignments that we're going to be discussing today. Obviously, there is some exams, but they will obviously be done and discussed in the external training. So there is a 12 mark grid that is available in the specification and I will share that with you in a second so you can see what it looks like. You should have been all sent a pack that you can obviously have access to the specification, the example materials etc um, but I will show you where you can find these on the website as well in case you didn't get them. The link at the bottom is also you should get a copy of the slides. The link at the bottom um, will show you how this kind of process works. I'm only going to skim across it because we did go in a bit more detail into it um, on the getting ready to teach. But let me just share my screen with you and show you what document I'm referring to. OK, so let's jump over to this one. So this is the specification. This I'm um, just on page. For those of you who want to know, it's page 24 on the PDF, but actually physically 16, because obviously the first few pages aren't numbered. And this is for component one. Um, if you've not been on the previous training, we call them components instead of units or modules, component one and component two and component three. Um, so component one is animal housing. And this is the mark um, grid that I was talking about, the 12 point mark grid for that unit. And as you can see, there's obviously the bands of three points. You've got one to three, four to six, seven to nine and ten to twelve. And the wording is key because obviously the first one, as it says at the top, limited and adequate good and comprehensive and the knowledge that the learner shows will depend on what they graded um then what happens is they get a grade for the unit so previously if you've taught previous qualifications from Pearson you will know that you normally get marked them a pass merit or distinction 
that doesn't happen now. What happens is you get a, um, they get a band or they get the point marks uh, for each assignment. Then the unit will have an overall point system. And then uh, when you're working out the overall grade for that learner, that will then convert those points into your past merit distinction. So they're not actually getting their grade until the very end. And I will go through that in a bit later on. When you're submitting your um, learner work for moderation, I'm just going to share, go jump back to the presentation. When you're um, organising your moderation, you will obviously have to send in a list of all your learners and the grades that they have been awarded. You have to rank them in order because they will need to know that they get in a good, the moderation needs to look at obviously a range. They don't want to pick all the learners. They happen to be all um, certain order, certain numbers um, and miss out. So they need to have a good average across the whole board. So therefore, you do need to send them in rank order. So the example standardisation and materials are um, available, obviously, on the Pearson website. I'm going to go through them today. I've had a meeting with the um, lead moderator. I can't be a moderator myself, otherwise I wouldn't be able to do the training for you. So I've had a meeting with the lead train the moderator even um, to go through the materials. And they've talked about the points that they're looking for and give me the key points so that I can obviously pass all that knowledge on to you guys. It's important to know that I'm going to mainly sh only show you the higher standards. There is um, in the materials available a high, medium and low. The reason I'm showing you the highest ones, because obviously you want to know what the highest expectations is. There's no point showing you the lowest ones and saying this needs more detail, this needs more detail. Let's just start at the top and say this is what we expect. Um, always aim high, as we say. So this is um, being created by the lead moderators. And this is just an example one. So this is not the one that is actually live at the moment. You will only have access to that when you come round to obviously having your learners sit in. There is no more um, internal verification. So you don't need to complete the um, OSCAR or the um, internal VFR OSCAR to be able to register for it. Your centre should have access to the materials when you've obviously um, ready to sit them. So we're going to start with um, component one and then we'll look at component two and we're going to look for, focus through the tasks, look at the timings and how the tasks work. This is what the document looks like um, from the website, but I'm going to just going to again share my screen again with you so that you can see the document and we'll work our way through it. So back to where we were a second ago. And we're going to go to component one. So I so said, this is component one. This is animal handling and it covers A, B and C learning outcomes. I'm just going to skip through. the. You obviously get to read this in your leisure, but it's just stuff at the general. So I don't really want to take up time reading through it all for you. So how this works is they've got the assignment first. They break how the assignment would look and um, what the learner would get. So they would get this information all the way down to going keep going to here and then we go on to the learner work so what I'm going to do for the point of the training is we're going to have a look at each individual task and then the learner works for it after it so we can kind of focus on that one element and then we will um talk talk about each bit as a whole so the first thing to note again is this is only an example so the vocational contents I've been told there will be a lot more in detail on the live versions and the main reason for for this is because it, they've obviously picked an example and they'll be able to to dive in a bit more deeper with it whereas this is only the um sorry they've picked obviously a topic that they can dive more deeper in this is only the example so it's very basic but you will get a lot more detail the other thing that will change is the tasks will generally be the same they will always have to look at two species but the groups that they might have to do on task one will vary so this one we're looking at these two groups the invertebrates and the reptile group However, that will be different on the live papers when they get it. So task one, let's have a look at task one. So they need to research the behaviour um, and behaviour patterns of two species, including the behaviour, handling and restraints of the species. And like I said, they will be selecting an invertebrate and a reptile. It's important to note here that the learner will be picking this one. 
This one can be anything. So this is just the research side of it. There is no physical handling of this species. And what they choose to have or what they are given for task two and three will be by the tutor because that would be what resources you guys have. Um, and it is not limited to the groups. It is very much more open. But this one, they have to pick it within the groups and they can pick any species they wish because they're only, they're, I say they're only researching. This is a research task. So therefore, they don't need to have that, um, have it available to them. Obviously, it's probably better if they did because it will be help them with the research and their understanding, but it's not a requirement. So they have to produce a report. Now, there is details in a minute when we go further down on what is required, but I'm just going to go through the task first and then we'll have a look at it and break it down a bit more. So the report should talk about normal and abnormal behaviours for each species, internal and external factors for each chosen species and reasons why the factors identify um, these animal, animals and the factors that impact the handling and restraining. So that's what they need to talk in their um, report that they're doing. As it says here, um, they need to have, the report needs to be, sorry, it's opening up the thing, five to seven pages on A4. So this ideally we'd have it typed. We can't restrict it that it has to be typed. So that some learners may need to hand write it because the resources etc we have. But um it is recommended they they type it. For moderation you will have to upload the learner work that is selected to I will show you later on to the platform. And obviously if it's handwritten you're going to have to scan it in. So it makes your life a lot easier if they type it up from scratch or from the very beginning. For this task, they do get one point, um, they do get two hours research time. So they get time to research the topic before they sit down and do the report. This needs to be supervised research time and they can use the internet and stuff to obviously research it. Um, and for that, they can do four sides of A4 or one side of A, um, one piece of A4, sorry, two pieces of A4, double sided, depending on what it is, but four sides of A4. And if they're typing it up, it needs to be font 10. And this is just the information that they then will take into the hour and a half they have to complete the task. So it's the research element of it. So then they get an hour and a half to complete the task and type it up, and make it into the report that they want to do. And this is worth 12 points, obviously, because it's from the 12 mark grid. Does everyone understand how that task works? Any questions before I move on to the learner example? Can't see anything yet, so I'm going to carry on. I'm going to scroll down. Sorry if it makes your eyes go funny for a second, but it's just a much easier to scroll down and look at the learner work. So this is the learner work. Again, it gets the high standards. This individual um, scored 60 out of 6 points, 12 out of 12 points marks. They chose the red need um, tarantula for their first bit. And the second one, I'm going to go to the second, was the bearded dragon. So this is a high standard. This is what they expect. So I'm just scrolling to the top again. Key point is they have to do referencing. So they have obviously referenced that where they got this picture from. If pictures are from the, your own facilities, they can just literally put from the animal care centre or whatever it's called or from the college or school. Um, but as long as they've registered them, um, reference where the pictures come from. I'm not going to read for all the learner work because I'm sure you can do that when I show you, obviously, or you've got the download, but I'm just going to um, flick through and then there's comments at the bottom about what the moderators found. So you see there's pictures of the throughout. Then they talked about the beard dragons again, talking about all the different bits that they need to talk about. Pick another picture. This is the main thing. So that after each learner work, this is on all the high, medium and low, there is these blue and yellow boxes. So the blue boxes telling you what the, they found, their kind of feedback, etc. And then the tips are in the yellow boxes. So it's quite important you read these elements. It's really helpful. So they have obviously said that this is learning 12 out of 12. So we know that they've obviously got the higher grade um, and they provided comprehensive knowledge. And you can see the comprehensive knowledge that's come from that grid, um, grading grid that we looked at earlier. Understand the behavior of the animal selected their detailed amount of normal and abnormal behaviour patterns for the chosen species. Factors um, affect behaviour and reasoning impact on handling, restraining and well-developed. So you can see that they've linked to obviously everything they need to do and that's why they've got that grade. Um, some of the examples I'll show you later are not fully, so they then explain what they would have done to get that extra few points. So tips, obviously the specification, you should always know obviously the specification, have it all and be taught everything that's within that. So therefore the learners are ready. So um, these Pearson set assignments need to be 
that's when they've been taught the whole unit hence why no one's not many people are going to sit this window because they find that there's not enough time to teach everything um and that they'll be doing it in the next window which i do show you the timelines later the learner was selecting the two animals from the group that they needed to do so both species were in the correct one um the sample assessment material states the checklist that they need to provide um five to seven pages and obviously you can see that they've they've produced that there's enough detail they had supported images it doesn't matter again what they've said here is it doesn't matter how the report is presented so it could be an essay um it could be a powerpoint presentation with notes they don't mind as long as obviously all the information is there task one obviously as i said is they have the preparation time to do the research and then they get the 1.5 hours for the actual to make the, the the actual work and as i said if it can be handwritten we can't we can't stipulate if it needs to be either there's a question so if the learner only completes one animal would that be zero marks Oh, that's a good question. I would assume it is because they have not they haven't done the two species. So I'm assuming it would be straight away zero marks, even if the one species is really detailed. They haven't done the two. Um, I will double check it. Any questions that I would want clarifying get sent off to the um, team that organise the events and then they send it to the, the standard, higher, the lead stand moderators, etc. And the subject specific people and then they get email you all the answers so what I'll do is I will just get that clarified for you Jerry but I'm 99% sure it would be a zero but I have noted it down thank you for your question Okay, so we're going to scroll back up again. Sorry for making your eyes go funny for a second, just while we go to task two. So first task, the research. We've seen the research reports on kind of what we've expected. We're now going to look at task two. And this is where we're planning the handling. So this is where they will have to be given two species from you guys, because it has to be two species that they will be able to physically handle and restrain that you have access to. It does not be need to be within the groups that were stated in task one. So any two species, but it has to be different handling techniques. So you can't give them, I don't know, a lizard where they have to do the fork method and a rodent where they did the fork method, because the handling technique is the same, even though they're different species groups. So it's more important that they are different handling techniques than they are different species groups, if that makes sense. So they will plan in task two, and as I'm sure you'll probably guessed, in task three, they will be doing the physical handling. So the species for task two and three are gonna be the same. So they need to plan um, what, the, what animal they're handling and the surroundings they are, why and where the animal will be handled, um, the equipment that they may use, the reasons why they choose them and the technique, um, plan the personal health and hygiene and uh, welfare considerations, um, health and safety considerations that affect the planning decision. So they're going to write their report. Um, how they present this is up, is fine. They can include pictures. They don't need to include pictures. Obviously, task reason them actually physically doing it. So there will be evidence later on of that. So for this one, they get have to, as it says here, there needs to be one plan for up to eight pages. Now it says up to eight pages. We are not expecting eight pages or they are not expecting eight pages. Um, they, so you'll see in a second, the high, this is a high end example and they have definitely not done that many um, pages. There's another question. So the question is, can they use the same animal in two and three as they use in one um, and task one? Yes, of course they can. So if the learner chose two species that you happen to have and they also want to do for um, task two and three, yes, you can. As long as they are, are um, using the different handling techniques. So if the person above obviously chose the tarantula and the 
the um, bearded dragon, yes, you can handle them in different techniques. So yes, they could ch choose them. But you may decide that actually we don't want them handling the tarantulas um, at our centre. A lot, or if so many people have picked it, etc., then you might choose something else. So you don't have to have them the same. They can be, but doesn't have to be. Um, so they have to obviously have the information from you guys what animal they have in they need to have a range of handling and restraining equipment available to them and computer access so they can type it up but obviously again it's not too if it's handwritten we can't we can't stop them from doing that this is um they get 2.5 hours to complete this task so let's scroll down sorry scrolling down again all the way Oh, we've done that one, we've done that one. Right, okay, so this is the plan. Again, they've got 24 out of 24, top marks. How they present it, again, is very optional, which I'll talk about in a second. So this person has been given a dog. So they are talking, first of all, how they're going to handle the dog. So they've talked about a little instruction, talked about the plan, answered all the kind of questions that are required. Then they've done a breakdown of, like, health, safety, medical conditions, exercise, um, and the individual animal they got. And then they've gone through a step by step. So step one, step two, step three, step four. And then that's what they've done all the way down. So you can see this is what's one, two, three pages for each species. Definitely not eight. So you definitely see that it doesn't need to be. If they want to do a flow chart, if they want to do a table with their steps, it doesn't matter as long as it is detailed. And that will help obviously get the higher grades. These pictures that provided are fine. And um, again, you don't have to include images, but these are obviously not been referenced. Um, they are from the learner themselves. Then the second animal they've chosen is or been given is a chicken. So again, they've talked about the same thing, talked about the key points, broke it down in sections, talked about the individual, and then talked about their steps. And again, pictures of them doing it. So the principal moderator's commentary, the learners provided photos of themselves for each species. Um, this is not a central requirement, as I said, but it's obviously nice to have submitted. It's not, you know, it doesn't have to be because they're going to have the photo, they're going to have the evidence up on the next task. This is just their plan. Um, so you don't need to kind of say this is what I would have done because technically they're, they're planning it. Again, using the keywords comprehensive, um, knowledge and understanding in their report, the reasons for personal um, animal health and safety, welfare considerations are fully um, developed and they've obviously accounted for the reasons for handling restraining risk assessment of the environment so the task requires two individual plans which the learner obviously has produced um, for different handling and restraining techniques as I said so you need to make sure that you've chosen species that are ticking all those boxes So yeah, remember, it's just this is just repeating some of the stuff I've already highlighted, but highlighting that it's up to eight pages. They can be presented in storyboards, flowcharts, or any kind of format they you wish, as long as the evidence is there. And the task two animals will be used in task three, as I've said. So kind of talked about that bit. So I was going back up the top, we're going to look at task three, which I'm guessing you've already guessed what it is, but let's go through it in detail. So task three is them actually doing the handling and restraining. So we um, they have to obviously have selected the equipment that they're going to be using and promoting health and safety and welfare of themselves and the animal throughout it. Now, this has to be done by video evidence. It is a minimum recordings must cover them selecting the equipment and using the equipment to handle the animals. This needs to be short clips, um, as it says below two to five minutes in length for each okay all they need is the equipment obviously will already be out they do not need a video of the person going to get the equipment if the equipment is out they've already said above in task two why they've got chosen that equipment and what they're going to use and the steps they're going to do all we need to know is the evidence of the videos with them with the equipment so they may hold up the equipment and say what it is etc um they don't even have to talk because they've already talked about it before. Ideally, you'd want them to identify the equipment, but they just have to hold it up and say, you know, what, what they've got there. Um, it does not need to be them justifying it or anything like that because they've done that already. The second video would just be them following through the steps, basically, that they've already planned. And it just needs to be short, sweet, to the point of them doing those things that they said they were going to do. From, for example, the dog getting it out of the kennel all the way to putting it back in the kennel and doing the stuff in between. 
so that they have access um, for the species they've been um, and video recording devices. So this can be a mobile phone, a tablet, video recorders. And um, we've had questions asked if learners can record each other. That's fine as long as the you are present. You have to be there as the assessor. Um, so if you've got two people doing handling at the same time, like you put them into pairs and they're one person's recording, the other person doing the handling, you've got another one and you're monitoring both, um, but they're doing the physical recording, that's fine. And it can be edited, so it's just short clips. Um, at the beginning of the video, they need to identify that who they are, um, their name, et cetera, and what tasks they're doing, what, what you know, com um, component one, task three, et cetera. If they don't want to do that, they can just hold up a bit of paper with that information on, or you could type it on the video if you're if you know if your editing skills are up to that standard and you want to put stuff in there, then that can be done as well. And they get two hours to complete this task. Now, unfortunately, because this is the first cohort going through um, just now, we obviously haven't got learner work because it's not been previously happened. So the the Monitor, uh, principal monitorators commentary is a lot in depth because it's going to talk about stuff that they would expect um and obviously going forward when this rotation has gone as long as some learners are in it then there will be evidence available etc so the learner will have selected obviously been given the two animals by the tutor and they would identify who they are in the video um by verbal or written as authorization and then this just goes into detail what they would do if it was one to three for all to six grade, seven to nine, and then 10 to 12. And that's the same in all the different ones. So you can kind of have a read through and kind of re understand what would be required for each one. So this task as the tips requires the, the learner to handle the two species they planned in task two, complete for evidence of short videos recorded um, as a minimum, we'll be identifying them, selecting the equipment, using the equipment to handle and surround the animal. Consideration should be to the length um, that needs to be uploaded. So you will obviously have to think that these videos are gonna be uploaded. And obviously if you have massive long videos, it's gonna take ages for you to upload them and depending on how many learners you have, how many pieces of work. So like I say, do edit them down to those two to five minutes so that they are short clips of exactly what they're doing and um, they're ticking the boxes that need to be met, not the additional stuff that they don't need to see them doing. So as it says here, they, they can be by the assessor or the peers or set up a pre-standing videos, um, mobile phone tablets or video recorders. The learner may comment during the video, such as explaining the techniques they're using um, to promote health and welfare, but because they've talked about it in task two, this is not compulsory. No additional evidence is needed. They do not need photo evidence to say alongside it. They just need those short videos. So that is component one broken down for you. Has anyone got any questions on component one before we move to component two? No one's raising their hand, so I'm going to take that as a good sign. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to component two now. Um, and this one is a bit more laid out slightly different because of obviously it's, it's a different task. Um, but the, what they require, it doesn't necessarily fall slow. There's actually four tasks in this rather than three. Um, but we'll go through it. Now, so I'm going to make it a bit bigger, sorry, so that you can see the text. I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go through each task, um, talk about what's required, and then look at the learner evidence. As I previously said, the video, um, the vocational content will be much more in depth on the live versions um, than it is here. Task one, again, is a research report task, and it does state the groups. Um, though these groups are stated within the spec, so you should already have seen these. Um, if you haven't, I can show you later, um, but they are within the spec. What groups may come up? Um, so again, this is stated, and this will change each live version that is available. 
So task one is a research. So they need to do produce a report about accommodation. Um, because sorry, this is the accommodation unit. <laughs> I didn't say that one. Um so they need to research the accommodation that meets the welfare needs of two species, one from small for this one is small mammals and one for reptiles and again that may change it says these should be different than task two okay so they need to be different species than what they're going to do so this makes sure they cover all the boards of the things so your report should include the um, factors fixtures and fittings that need to be considered and meet the five animal welfare needs the details of types of accommodation for each animal why each of your accommodation choices including the fixtures of fittings are suitable for the animal so that's what their report needs to include as like the other one they get them has to be a written response of five to seven pages in a4 again ideally typed if it's not it's not the end of the world um and they get 1.5 hours to complete this task so they have time to do the research they could do doing the research complete and write up all the information about the two species in that time so we're going to scroll down and have a look at the learner example work. Oh, too far. So this one, um, this learner got 11 marks. We'll talk about obviously what they got in, at the end. So they've chosen a guinea pig. They've talked about, obviously, you can see the five animal needs there. And um, they've got some pictures. Now, I'm guessing these might be from the centre because the pic, the, yes, are from our, at the college. So they, again, they haven't referenced it, but they've said it's from the college. Um, details i'm not obviously going to read through them all for you some more pictures and again they've referenced where these pictures have come from um and they've done a nice little conclusion the next animal they chose is the bearded dragon again they talked about the bearded dragon they ticked all the boxes that basically needed because this is a higher level one so you you know that it's gonna have quite a lot of detail in it they've talked about and um, they've got pictures again from the college so they've just referenced that so the Principal moderator commentary. They have obviously cut the learner has um, made some done two essays on the two species from the groups identified. So the guinea pig from the small animals, um, bearded dragon from the reptiles. They've covered the five animal needs identified and referenced throughout the decision of accommodation requirements for both animals and clear links to the factors discussed in the welfare of both animals. Um, Knowledge and understanding demonstrate again using these big the words that link to the grading grid, comprehensive detail about the housing, fixture and fittings, bedding, and considered the animals. Um, full detail about the factors, account for the factors that are considered um, the choices they made. So they've kind of done ticked everything along the way of why they've chosen what they chose. Um, I still can't yet. And then they've done well developed reasons for aspects of the linking to the animals. Um, although this is why they haven't got the full marks, although the variant choice of the bearded dragon has been described as average um, with incomplete reasoning. So that is why they've been dropped down. They didn't get the full 12 marks, they got 11 marks. Um, as it says, being warded in the middle of man band four, um, not achieved the top marks because of the reason for the bearded dragon. So that's kind of kind of see why they haven't done that. So further information on this cohort component you can find in section three of the teaching guide. Now the teaching guide again is um, another useful document that goes into detail on how obviously you should teach the modules, how they will be assessed, etc. And um, that is also on the website, and I will show you later. Um, but that's the link as well for it. There's bite-sized videos as well of how to apply the mark scheme. That was a the video that link that I showed you earlier and that's quite handy to feed into this that kind of shows you everything to do with the research project and what is needed we're going to move on to task two now so task two is safely preparing and checking animal accommodation so this is where they're going to basically it's video evidence they're going to set up an accommodation so you need to obviously this is selected by the tutor so the first task is selected by the learner again because it doesn't have to be the species and it won't be this can't be the same species as task two so this one um task two the tutor will choose because you have to set up accommodation that you've obviously got um the resources for and this is setting up fixtures and fittings preparing the accommodation for one animal 
um, and it has to be different annual to task free, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but it has to be set up. So it doesn't have to necessarily be um, an animal that you have. You just need to set up the accommodation. So if you've got a empty guinea pig enclosure or um, and you haven't got a guinea pig or a hamster or whichever animal you want, um, but they can set it up and demonstrate how to do it. That is the main thing. So they don't have to actually physically put the animal in there. If that makes sense. This will be done through video evidence. So there's no written evidence for this task. And it needs to be a minimum of them setting up with appropriate fixing and fittings, selecting the um, accommodation safely and carrying out a safety checks to make sure it's ready for the animal to go into. Again, I don't need to see the animal go in. I just need to know that they've checked it to make sure it would be OK. This will again be short clips. It says five to ten minutes. So we don't need to see them putting the sawdust into the enclosure to say it's ready. It's literally they can just start. It can be chopped up so that you can start seeing them put it in and move to the next bit. Or you, the learner might annotate that they were going to put they're going to put this in and then it jumps to it being in. And um, it doesn't matter. But as long as it's it's got all those bits in, they've selected the appropriate equipment. Again, have all the equipment out. I'm going to be using this, 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 um, and then select the um, accommodations safely, set up safely, and then carry out the safety checks. And again, they might talk through the safety checks they might quickly do. You need to have obviously access to the accommodation, the materials, the fix and fit ins, the tools, the PPE, et cetera, to do this, and then video device such as a mobile phone, tablet, et cetera, like we said before. They get two hours to complete this task. I'm just going to scroll down again. Again, unfortunately, we don't have the video evidence. Oh, do not further get further. We don't have the video evidence for this because, again, there's no learners that have gone through the, the cycle yet. However, they've gone into detail about how it should be set up. And it's quite important on this point to um, highlight that the video clip should be in video clip one, two and three, as it is stated here, because task four, they will evaluate what they've done. And it's important that they will evaluate clip one, clip two, clip three. So it's quite important that you stick to the kind of those links. If it's one video, that's fine. But I would split it up into three simple sections so that when they get to task four, it's much easier for them to do so. Um, so this is just, for example, using suing hamster as what they're setting up and what the videos would identify. So video one will identify them, um, the learner identifying the specific animal chosen and the suitable accommodation so they're selecting the accommodation um, and demonstrating the materials that they will be using including PPE fixtures fittings all the kind of things and um, that are appropriate for the animal welfare and personal health and safety video two will demonstrate the setup of the actual accommodation and make sure they're doing it in the correct sequence again they'll talk about that sequence later on and video three will be excellent standards of overall preparing and demonstrating through set up and then checks of health and safety to make sure it's ready for the animal. So this is just um again the commentary is hard because there's no actual physical videos but it's just saying that to see what the learner has done. Again they have to put their name, who they are, etc at the beginning of it um, at the start of the video. They've demonstrated the clear to an excellent standard um, top marks from band four again so you look at the spec and you'll see what that's against this is this task will be linked to task four but not linked to task three so it's important that they include the sequence of activities because that we will have to we'll, we'll talk about that in task four so let's see what task three is next so now we're going on to task three and task three is basically the clean out of accommodation and it has to be a different species to what they chose for task two. Um, so it can't be the same animal. So it's they basically tick two boxes because they've, they've looked after two species. Again, they will select the equipment that they're going to use and follow through appropriate procedures of clean out accommodation, disposal of waste and looking after the equipment they've used. Again, it's with video evidence. It needs to um, state the minimum is that they select the equipment, again, have it all ready so they can just say, this is what I've got. They will um, clean out. Again, we don't need to see it in detail. It may take them half an hour to clean out the accommodation. The, the moderators do not want a half an hour video. They just need to see short um, splits and swaps of each one. Um, so they clean out, them disposing of waste, and then maintaining the equipment. And as it says, it should be five to seven minutes in length each clip. 
the learners must have obviously access to the accommodation so again you need to select an animal that they can clean out now remember that you get a period to complete this in so the the when i look at the we'll look at the flow later the timelines but the, the new one's obviously just gone live they get until early december to do it so you need to make sure that you've worked it out so that you've got enough cleaning out for everybody and they will because it doesn't mean that you know you're not going to get somebody to clean the same accommodation every single time and the cleaner will be the cleanest accommodation in the world but they can do it the next week etc so you can work out a plan to make sure you've got everyone in um, they need to obviously have access to all the tools and stuff that they need and a video recording device so let's go down also i missed that they get an hour to complete this task so let's scroll down task three so this one for the example they've used a crested gecko um, and they need to have clip one and clip two so again it needs to be clear structure because this will affect task four later on clip one identifies the learner um identifies the learner the combination that they've selected um and demonstrate the, the selecting the equipment that they're going to use for the clean out then task uh, clip two even would demonstrate the using of all the equipment they've um in a correct sequence including disposal of waste and maintaining the equipment and obviously to an excellent standard for the higher one so this is very similar to what we said before they um they make sure that the learner has identified themselves if it's by speaking or a written statement done to an excellent standard and they'll be given band four or depending on you look at the grade and grid depending on what grade they get and as for task three this is linked to task four so they need to make sure that they're aware of the sequence so let's have a look at task four then and see what i'm going on about about making sure it's important they understand each one so task four is a written report but it's evaluating or reviewing the clean the, the accommodation they've prepared and cleaned. So the report will um A will be how to prepare an um, animal accommodation that they did in task two, and then B will be how to prepare clean accommodation that they did for task three. So the report A is um looking at what they did for task two and they're going to do the reasons why they did each step of, of cleaning it out why they selected the equipment so again similar to what we looked at component one where they were planning the handling they would just find everything there and then they did the handling this is like the other way around they've done the, the preparing for tar for report a they're now going to justify everything they did um so they'll do the reasons why they carried out the steps in a certain order of why the accommodation was prepared and set up and was it checked and why they did certain checks etc and then report B will be doing exactly the same, but for task three, where they did the full clean out. The reasons why they did the steps they did, including the disposal of waste, the cleaning of maintained equipment, and the reasons they did them in that certain order. And this covers learn outcome B and C, and it's two written reports and approximately five pages each. Now, it's approximately, again, you do not have to do five pages. You'll see the ones that we look at, they do not go into that much detail. They don't go into that, that length but they still achieve the higher grades. They get 1.5 hours to complete this. Um, they have to have access to their videos. So they can obviously help to link it to them. Um, and it's quite important they do it quite close together, I suppose, because then they can evaluate and review. Let's go and have a look. Scroll all the way to the bottom now. Okay, so this is task 4A. So this is looking at the task um, that they did, the preparing. And this learner has done it in the way that they've kind of talked about in video one, I did this, and they've kind of gone into detail about uh, the animal they did, um, why they selected the equipment they did, they've listed all the stuff that they were going to use. And then in task video two, they've talked about um, what they did in what order, so that it's easy to kind of follow through the procedure, basically step by step. Again, it doesn't matter what order they could have done it in a table. They could have done it. They could have done it similar to the person who did the handling when they did the step one, step two, step three. Um, it doesn't matter. And in video three, then they talk about um, the checks they did and what how they made sure that it was probably ready for. For this example, is the hamster. So the more, uh, moderators obviously said here that they've covered all the steps involved in the video. So again, they've talked about video one, two, three. Um, it's, there's comprehensive application of knowledge and understanding. Again, using those words from the 
12 point and um, 12 mark table. Reasons for well developed of all spec of why they've set up the um, accommodation they have and the way that they've done it and the sequence they've done it. And then they've been why they've been awarded band um, for 12 marks. So they got 12 out of 12 because they followed everything, ticked all the boxes and gone into detail with it. This is obviously reviewing the, doc, the um, videos. They do not need to include photo evidence. So if they're talking about what they did each one, we don't need photos as well. We've already got the videos. We don't need photo evidence on top of that. So this is task 4B. So we're now looking at the cleaning. And this time we're talking about the Crested Gecko. So video one was talking about all the um, reasons why they selected all the equipment, their PPE, the equipment that they selected. And then two, so this time they've done the steps but they've named numbered them one two three four etc and they've talked about what they did and what order and why they did it then they did the reasons for the cleaning and the importance for the species so the commentary the learner has um covered obviously all the steps that they did in the videos for the crested gecko the evidence is comprehensive again using that language applied them knowledge and understanding of the safety clean out accommodation following the steps in a logical sequence and the reasons are well developed for the order of carrying out the steps and then obviously why they've been marked for and as with the previous task we've got the video so we don't need photo evidence along to go with it so that is task and um, component two in a nutshell so it's a bit, bit more complicated because you've got the four tasks and they link so differently um so do take your time to read through it and understand it and know that obviously one is the report two is the preparation three is the cleaning out and then four is evaluating two and three <laughs> which sounds a lot more complicated than it, it is i assure you okay let's jump back to the presentation for a second We've gone through these bits. So we're just going to jump past that. Has anyone got any questions before we move on about the component of the example standardization activity? No one's put their hand up or put some comments in the box. So I'm hoping that's all good. So resubmissions. Now we know that all learners are not necessarily going to achieve on their first attempt. So they do get chance to resubmit. They get 14 days as they did previously to re to resubmit any changes to that um, that they might not achieve. So you mark it just like you did any previous assignment and then they get, get the feedback and obviously um, they can resubmit if they need to. This has to be done within the moderation before the moderation period starts. So this needs to happen before the moderation window opens. You've got the end, you have to have your grades all completed by this, by the moderation, which I'll show you in a timeline in a second. Um, so you need to make sure that the um, correct grades are submitted, um, ones of the final grades. So this is how the um, theories kind of happen. So like I say, not, I don't think it, any of you have said that you're doing this um, window, but if you had, for example, um, you would have now now would have your Pearson set assignment. So just they were um, accessed at the beginning of October. You would then have until um, you'd be working on them. You'd have to setting them to the learners, learners completing them, you marking them, charts for resubmissions, um, etc. Within the October to December time. Early December, the moderation window happens. So this, so I'd always recommend you get them ready for the early December. However, the deadline is the 15th of December. So you have to have submitted all your learner work, full grades um, by uh, your, the sample that they want to have by the, the 15th. So you need to get your learner work um, completed and then obviously sent your sample off. The external assessments is in January. So if you're doing another module alongside it, then you will obviously look at doing that window and then March will be get when you get the results. Then we go on to the next kind of cycle. So this, some of you may be doing this one. So early February is when your peers and set assignments will be available. So you're probably teaching it now. You're going to teach it all the way up to February, the module, and then you're going to have your peers and set assignments. Once it's available, you have from February and April for them to be given out, completed, marked, Charts for resubmissions and remarking, and then your moderation window opens in early April, 
and the last submission is the 1st of May. So you need to make sure that you obviously have that, your full sample given to them by the 1st of May. So ideally it'd be way before, but that is the deadline. Then a second window for external assessments is um, in May. So obviously, again, this is a, it depends how you develop, deliver your course. In the getting ready to teach section, we did talk about um, layouts of them and when you might sit things, etc. How if you're doing long and thin or short and fat modules, um, but depend on what works best for you, we'll see your rotation. But most of you will probably be doing two years. So you'll probably do your first peers and set assignment in February. The next one will be in October and you'll probably do your exams in um, end of May or you might do January, depending on what works best for you. That's kind of how the layout works. Obviously, the next question is how many are you going to have sampled? So moderation has replaced the um, standard verification process. You won't have standard verification because you'll have the moderation process has been replaced in it. Um, so you will have to submit your learner work um, via the learner work transfer. So it's uploaded into the platform, which I'll show you um, that later. And depending on what window you've chosen will depend on when it obviously happens. But you will be assigned a moderator so you can have that conversation with them. Depending on your cohort, depends on how, much, how big your sample is. If you've got one to ten learners, obviously all of them will be selected and you have to submit all of them. From 10, oh, sorry, from 11 to 100, people 10. If it's um, 101 to 200, it's 15. And if it's over 200 learners, it'll be 20. So that kind of gives you an idea of how many of your learners will be selected for moderation. Obviously, your students will have to be registered on the qualification. You've obviously done that now if you've got active learners. Um, but when you choose to do your moderation, it's um, up to you. You can choose, um, when you choose to do the peer set assignments will be depend on what works best for you. And you'll have a moderator assigned and you'll have that communication with them. So the moderator will contact the quality nominee. So that might necessarily be you, but someone within your centre. And then they will obviously get contact with you or if you're the design contact person they'll contact you directly um, to work out obviously what's best and they will contact the program lead to arrange mutual convenience to have feedback with your moderation so you've given your sample in and then they will work with you to go through the feedback um hopefully it's all good or they all agree with all your marks um and then that that is all signed off on the rare occasion that there is difference between marks and the moderator marks um, then that is when you will um, have to have further discussions and further samples might have to be uploaded to the learner transfer um, box so that you can they can have a smart sample more. So even though you might only have, say, 10 learners being selected, be prepared that if there is slight difference in marking, so you, obviously you'll have your mark and you'll have the moderator marks. If there's variation in that, then um, you might have to select more samples to um, upload. So any um, disagreement or any issues that identify, you get two weeks to obviously mend that mark. So that's obviously after the 15th, you're now into the, the afterwards process. Will be um, feedback, etc. will be amended and any feedback that affects um, sample will also affect the whole group so if something was identified that would actually affect everybody you'd have to amend it for everybody and then you get available to amend a excel online so that obviously the correct grades are in place so then obviously once you've had your moderation any changes and stuff um, or disagreements with the grades have been um, rectified. You then obviously update your um, Excel online and then results will be available after that point. So the learners grades are not final until the results are released. If um, the centre is not is still not in the reasonable, if after the changes are still not agreed, then obviously more actions will be put in place and you work with your moderator to, to do that. There is a video that talks about the moderation process in a lot more detail, but it is general. It's not obviously talking about animal care. So if you want to have a look at that, that link will be there. Again, I'll show you where all your videos are when I go through the website tour later. I 
I mentioned this earlier, sorry, this is where we're there. If obviously any changes that need to happen, or adjustments will apply across the whole cohort, not just the learners that are moderated. And it's important that you undertake internal standard verification activities um, across all markings. So even though you don't have standard verification anymore, you still have to do your internal standard verification of marking because you are marking, obviously, the Pearson set assignments um, and it has to show that um, standards. So you still have to complete that activity. Um, and the feedback will obviously be given to your lead and then they need to feed it back to your centre assessors. So F1, it may be just that you, depending on your cohort, how big it is, it might be that there's only a few of you. If it's bigger, then obviously it needs to ensure that everyone is aware of what the feedback was. So quality assurance is still in place, but obviously we don't have standard verification. You've still got the... Um, moderation is now replaced internal verification. So you can see that the table on the right, um, the old, older tech awards, you can see what they did in, the, in comparison to um, this awards from the 2022 window. Um, and it just shows you that how it varies. The moderation has basically replaced internal verification. And that is how we ensure quality is happening. There is... Um, a quality assurance page on the website uh, which you can have a look at and there obviously have details on there and there's a lots of like as I said the training that I've just spoken about and I will show you this in a second um, and how to find those videos uh, but also you can have a look and um, find everything that you need about the tech awards as well as not just for um, our qualification but for them as a whole in case you teach other subject areas or your centre does. Assessment recording. So it's important that you complete the paperwork. You have to upload the learners. So there's different options. You've got the assessment record sheet, and this is per um, learner's name, and you have one per, per learner. This one on the right is an Excel version of it. So you might decide to have it that way. So again, it doesn't matter as long as you've got the evidence um, and how you what works best for your centre. There's those two record sheets. So awarding, so once you've worked obviously through the moderation, you'll be award, they'll be awarded and the grade boundaries will be set for each assessment series. So um, the ones that I showed you earlier are from the spec, um, they will be obviously created for all the series and you'll be able to get that when you get the material. So it'll all be in there that you need. Everything is in that kind of PDF when you get it. They obviously get a, a raw grade. So they get the grade, as I said, for each um, assignment in each component. Then the component will get a grade and then that will work out to overall grading um, for the qualification. And that can be calculated on the through the link or you can obviously at the end of the spec, there is a whole document, a whole pages on how to work out the grade, how the overall grades work. So it's important that you understand that. And we do talk about that and that getting ready to teach so that you can kind of work out how those overall grades are going to be calculated. Obviously, um, if you didn't go into, if you hadn't been to the getting ready to teach training, um, there is a um, possibility that the learner can get a U grade because it's done on points. They just have to have enough points to get a, um, a grade. So the, the lowest is obviously level one pass and it goes all the way up to level two distinction. So as long as they've got enough points for a level one pass in two components, for example, then they will still achieve. They don't have to get a grade and eat all three of them. So that's quite a good thing to know. And again, having a look at those pages in the spec will make it will help with the understanding of that. So I've, I've already um, kind of kind of shown you the timeline of this. Um, the results when they will be available. So this series will be March. Um, the ones that obviously go are open now, and if it's the next window, it'll be August. Um, no external assessments or qualification results will be available until March 2024 because obviously we've had to have the time to go through. This is just the. Um, Kind of the same thing I showed you earlier, but in a bit more detail, it gives you specific dates of when things are going to happen. So, for example, 
Um, the 3rd of October was when the Pearson set assignments were available. So they were live. Everyone could see them. Um, well, not everyone could see them. Sorry, that's not correct. They were live on the website for those who were required them. Um, and then it says that they obviously any late, uh, late entries for learners on the qualification needs to be by the within this window. Um, then you've got the 1st of October was when the early moderation would begin in and you can obviously upload it to the learner work transfer platform. Then the deadline was the 15th of December. Um, then January will be when amended marks would happen. All the way down to when March 23rd, where the results will be available. And then if you've got any appeals, when they will be. Then the next slide is just showing you the exactly same information. But for the second window, so which we, you guys will probably uh, be working towards. So the 6th of February is when those Pearson set assignments will be available. Um, any so you gives you a chance to obviously work out on what your learner's doing and then another key result is that early moderation will be the 3rd of april all work must be submitted by the 1st of may and the results will be the 21st of august so it kind of gives you the layout of when things will actually happen which i think is quite useful so the pearson set Assignments can be given to learners at any time once they've been released. So it's important to keep to note down those dates that I said, because then you know that um, when they're going to be happening, you can set your ass assessment plans accordingly. Learners must now be entered into the internal assessment series. They're going to be sitting. Um, entries can be made in the same way as your current external assessments but obviously if we were internal. So we need to know what learners are sitting when. So you need to make sure that you're putting them in for what window they're going to be, because then you'll get access to those materials. Um, and it's important that you do that. It might not necessarily be done by you, but it's important that you're letting the people who do know. The Tech Awards does have a frequently asked questions page, which is really helpful to come back and ask, you know, see what the questions are. Um, and we will have a look at the same page in a second. Yeah, so what we'll do now is I'm just going to give you a quick tour. Has anyone got any questions before I go through the tour of the website? Because I've given you a lot of references to lots of things and materials that are available. And I want, I think it's quite important to know where to find them in case you don't have access. And plus, new ones always come available. So I'm just going to share my different screening. If anyone has any questions, obviously feel free to um, ask or raise your hand. Okay. So the, on the slide, we were just looking at the frequently asked questions for the BTEC Awards 2022, um, and they are all here. So you can click go through them and see if there's any questions you think oh that's a good question you can look and see the answers and they keep growing they keep getting more um so you'll be able to find all the information there how you find this is um you can use a search bar sometimes i think it's best just to google and just say btech tech awards frequent asked questions and you normally find that google will bring you or any search engine sorry that's very not very good is it any other search engines are available um but they'll bring you straight to this page and then you're there. If you get to the home page and you're brought here and you're like, I need to know where these frequently asked questions are, the best thing I find is to go to qualification at the top. If you look in the yellow popular one, go down into popular one, you can see the BTEC Tech Awards there. If you click on that, that will bring you to the general page where you've got some information. You can have a look and it tells you some of the trainings about all the information. See frequently asked questions for the qualifications, you can click there and then we're back at that page that we looked at a second ago. So that's the quickest way. Also from here, you can talk about um, teaching and that will tell you information about videos and guidelines, which I think is quite helpful. So you've got all the information to talk about the mark scheme training, the moderation process training, quality insurance, um, are all on here. So you can go through them and have a look. Um, video guides also on the other side so you can have a look and click through them if you also are when you're on this page the letters at the top are basically so you can find your subject area so we will go to a for animal care being the very top of the list most important <laughs> once you get to this page um you can go download the spec if you want from there i always find it best to click on the course materials and if you click on there 
it'll bring you to this page which has like then you can click on the different options and see all the different things now I obviously have access to everything and um, being a trainer and there may be some things that have lock um, key padlocks on and you can only access them if you've got authorization so it's important that you um know what you can have access to and if you haven't got access to something you think you should have access to speak to your quality nominee because they probably will I'm just going to pause before i go through this because there is a question so what's the minimum number of animals you think a school should have to successfully complete the tasks is two different species enough no two species is probably not enough because um you would well i would recommend to aid the learners that you should have um, a couple of species from each of the groups. So when I was looking, let me see if I can find this. I'm on this, the thing. Let's go to the spec for a second. I think, was it the teaching guide? What it has? Oh, yeah, the teaching guide. So this is the teaching guide. Um, and on page number 15 is the groups. And I would recommend the, I mean, livestock is not so much so much as important. Um, but I would, the small reptiles, birds, amphibians, I would ideally have a couple of each so that you can kind of give them that experience um, because they're going to go on and obviously be able to handle these animals. If, you, um, if you've got two species, they could technically do all the tasks, but I wouldn't necessarily think that would be enough because you need to if you've only got two species and you've got quite a large cohort you've got a cohort you don't want them all handling the same animal over and over and over again um like in quite quick concession because that would be quite stressful for the animal um also with clean out you don't want to have one cage they all have to clean out because again depending on how many students you have that might take time so the i know obviously it's not it's not ideal you can't necessarily control how many animals you have but ideally the more the better hope that answers your question but I'm just going to jump back to the website then. So you're very welcome. So when you're on this page, you've obviously got the spec, which you can download. Obviously, you guys probably know off by heart by now. Um, the sample assessment materials. This is the additional materials and stuff that are available. So you've got um, for component three exam, you've got the example there. If you click onto here, you go to internal assessments. So these are the Pearson set assignments. So I can't show you these, um, but these are the um, ones that obviously are going to be currently live. And if your learners have been in entered for their internal assessment, you would have access to these. If they're not, then you'd wait until the next window. Statement of purpose, but this is another good one. So this one, the teaching materials, the candidate assessment uh, records so when I showed you those tables I had the word document or the um, excel spreadsheet that's what these are so this is where you can access that and obviously have that download you've got planning so if you depend on what plan you had it shows an example of them so all these materials that I've been looking at today they're on here um, so you've got the component one and component two and they're zip files so you'll have the high low medium and low available so you can have a look at all of them Post training, so that is my <laughs> it's joy of hearing me again. Um, the get ready to teach. So if you didn't attend and you can't come on the twentieth of October, go to there. Teaching guide, another really important document that's really helpful. So if you haven't had a look at that, have a look. And if you did teach the older version of the Tech Awards, this is a guide to help you transfer them across. So this is a really key area for you guys. So make sure that you obviously have a little bit of a nosy there. If you decide that you want to have some more support, you want more training available to you, if you go to support and go to teachers, this will um, bring you up to past pay, um, exam windows, etc. But if you go down, you've got Excel online, um, results plus exam wizard, which are obviously different things available. Um, and then if you go to... Now, hold on. Here we go. You go to support and then training from Pearson, that will bring you up to the training that you might have booked on this one via this way. Um, but you'd obviously go to the um BTEX. Again, you can do it through the qualification as well. So you might find it easier to stick with going to the BTEC and then finding the training from there. But 
kind of have a little play if you've not used the website before and that should be quite helpful to you. So I'm just going to jump back to the PowerPoint. So the last thing is if you would like to join our moderator team. So if you have been um, have experience, obviously, develop, um, delivering qualifications for a while and you'd like to be um, involved in the redevelopment of the tech awards and become a moderator they are always looking for additional people i will cut and paste this into the chat box so that you can um fill it out if you wish hold on i'm just going to stop sharing a second because i can't cut and paste the link for some reason when it's in that and i'll jump it into the chat box for everybody in case you would like to have a look at that There we go, we're back. So yes, have a uh, if you'd like to complete the form and obviously be involved, that'd be great. And that's the end of the training, really. I know it's I feel like I've talked a lot. Um hopefully that's helped you with the understanding of how they're gonna work, how the moderation process is gonna work, what the tasks are and what they involve, and what the moderators are looking for, so you are fully prepared and get your learners ready to do the qualification. Um I'm gonna end the presentation. Stop sharing. Put my camera back on so you guys can see me. Hello. Um, has anyone got any questions? Or does anyone have anything that they would like to ask? I'm hoping it's been helpful. And I hope you found it really useful. Like I say, if you want more details, the getting ready to teach training, as I said, it's on the 20th of October, or you can watch the pre-recording that I did. Um which is available through the website. And then just keep an eye out because there's obviously other things that will come through. I'm glad you found it really useful. That's always good to know. Thank you, Karen. It's a lot of information to share, a lot of information to absorb in. So you're probably all sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, this is a lot. But I'm glad you've all found it useful. If you have no further questions, then that is everything. I'm not going to add anything else. So you are free to go. If you do have any questions Phil, and you don't want, you want to wait, you can stick around and I can speak to you at the end. That is absolutely fine. But thank you very much for all coming. You're very welcome. <laughs>